Well, I've watched them, and when everyone anyone says, "Well, where did he lie?" They have no idea. It's just a line they use. Mm. Uh, they, you know, put out in their machine that just say Trump lied, and nobody asks him where or anything. I didn't lie. In fact, we wanted to hear more from Trump tonight. Our Mike Gooding was scheduled to interview the former president after the rally, but we heard just about 15 minutes ago the Trump team canceled on Mike Gooding after asking us what our questions would be for the former president, telling Mike that there was no more time and that the former president only wanted to talk about last night's debate. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what a coward does when he knows he won't be able to spew a fire hose of lies and disinformation freely as he was allowed to do during the CNN debate. After taking victory laps in the wake of last week's debate, a debate in which the former president was recorded telling more than 30 lies in the space of 90 minutes, something that has been grossly overlooked in comparison to Biden's debate performance. He said some democratic states allow people to execute babies after birth, an egregious lie that is illegal in every state. He said everybody, even Democrats, wanted Roe v. Wade overturned. Roe was supported by two thirds of Americans, even more Democrats. He said every legal scholar wanted Roe overturned, abortion returned to the states. Legal scholars have told me directly this is not true. He said the U.S. currently has the biggest budget deficit ever. No, that happened under Trump in 2020. He said the U.S. currently has a record trade deficit with China that also happened under Trump in 2018. He said Biden personally gets a lot of money from China. Zero evidence of this. He said there were no terror attacks during his presidency. In fact, there were multiple attacks. He said Iran didn't fund Hamas, Hezbollah, other terror groups under his presidency. Iran, in fact, did. He said Biden wants to quadruple people's taxes. That is pure fiction. He said the U.S. has provided way more aid to Ukraine than Europe had. It's actually the opposite. He said the U.S. Provi pr has provided about 200 billion in Ukraine aid. It's closer to 110 billion. Uh, he said 18 or 19 million people have crossed the border under Biden. That is millions too high. He said many of these migrants are from prisons or mental institutions. His own campaign cannot corroborate. But sure. Let's give free reign to an unhinged liar because he spews such diatribe with confidence. But it was after the debate that former President Trump cancelled an interview with military reporter Mike Gooding. This was after Trump's campaign asked what questions the reporter was going to ask. Gooding, a military correspondent for ABC affiliate WVEC's 13 News Now, was scheduled to interview Trump after his rally, going as far as to tease the interview on air. But when anchors covered the rally online, they noted that Trump abruptly cancelled the interview, asking for questions in advance. Now I wonder why that is. Could it be that Trump HQ were afraid the former president may face actual pushback on the endless falsehoods he was given free reign to spew? Or were they worried that there may be a repeat of his last two local interviews, in which Trump complained of dangerous migrants flooding in from Venezuela before being prompted to cite his source, which he responded with, the papers. Before we go, Venezuela was very crime ridden. They announced the other day 72% reduction in crime in the last year. You know why? They moved all their criminals from Venezuela right into the good old USA. And Biden let them do it. It's a disgrace. But sir, where are those numbers coming from? Uh, I guess I get them from the papers in this case. I think it's a federal statement or, well, they're coming actually from Venezuela. <laughs> All right, so that soundbite uh, obviously has made its rounds across many circles. Um, I want to go right to a supporter of former President Trump, Jim Runstead. He just said the papers and then said Venezuela. We didn't have time to, to follow up with what he meant by that, but I did tell him we'll check on that, and we did. And the crime rate, according to the Interior Ministry in Venezuela, the crime rate has fallen by about 25% at some approximations, and the reason is because they've consolidated crime, and they also uh, have done some other measures, say it has nothing to do with migration. Either way, um, what are your thoughts on the numbers that former President Trump just kind of puts out there at rallies and expects people to believe? Losing it step by step, you're losing it. But Mr. President, your thoughts on the, the unionization that's happening down south, the interest that we're seeing in Tennessee with Volkswagen workers, it seems like it's catching on. It's not just a Detroit thing. Well, it could be happening. I mean, it's going to be happening, but you got to be very careful about what's going to happen in two years from now when China wants to take all of the jobs, because frankly, then union or non-union, and everybody's going to be hurt. 
Just a little bit of uh, some information, some fact checking. According to the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, our state, Michigan, actually gained 24,000 manufacturing jobs between January of 2021 and May of last year. That's actually tied for seventh in the country. Uh, and so this notion that the auto industry in Detroit is falling apart and that we need Mr. Trump's help may not be as on point as he would like or some of his supporters would like. There's a crisis at the border. What would you do if you are elected? We have to seal it up, go back to my program. We had the safest border in history. I built 571 miles of wall. We had 200 miles ready to go. We just had to flip it up. And uh, they, they decided that they wanted open borders. Now, there's some dispute over those numbers. PolitiFact reports more than 450 miles of border wall were built during former President Trump's first term. Much of that, though, was to replace old broken barriers. 50 miles of that wall were brand new. And you see, this is indicative of someone unequipped to handle pushback and actually answer harsh questions about things like his inability to accept the results of the previous election and whether he would do the same this time around, which somehow was still shown on the debate stage despite moderators doing everything possible to avoid it. Listen, people can debate on style points, but ultimately this election and who is the president of the United States has to be about substance. And the contrast is clear. Look at what happened during the course of the debate. Donald Trump lied over and over and over again, as he is wont to do. He would not disavow what happened on January 6th. He would not give a clear answer on whether he would stand by the election results this November. He went back and forth about where he stands on one of the most critical issues of freedom in America. Hell, even his minions are performing Olympic level verbal gymnastics to avoid answering this very question because the truth is they won't. We all know this. If Biden wins, will you accept the result? Again, what does this have to do with Julian Assange? The result of the election is on the minds, not just of Americans, but of the whole world. But I understand that we've reached the end of uh, the questions that you want to answer. And thanks to the Supreme Court's latest ruling, Trump's basically been vindicated for the abhorrent way that he handled the last election. But what does it say about the man that his team claims hasn't lost a step and is still as sharp, despite confusing the name of his own doctor that allegedly said he was in better shape than Obama? I think he should take a cognitive test like I did. I took a cognitive test and I aced it. Doc Ronnie, Doc Ronnie Johnson, does everyone know Ronnie Johnson, congressman from Texas? He was the White House doctor. And he said I was the healthiest president he feels in history. So I liked him very much and need immediately. In fact, he said if I didn't eat junk food, I would live to 200. That's what he said. Let's bring Dr. Evil in on that one. Right. And thinking Nikki Haley was in charge of Capitol Police on January 6th. And Viktor Orban is the leader of Turkey. That he would cancel an interview minutes before going on air because he couldn't get a hold of the questions in advance. Was he worried he'd face someone not named Jake Tapper and Dana Bash who would maybe, I don't know, have something to say in response to statements like after birth abortions that are not a thing? Or dare I, dare I, dare I say, open with the question that every interviewer should before even beginning an interview with Trump, asking him who won in 2020. And then maybe we can go from there for the sake of democracy. You know, this seems to be kind of also another litmus test for how to be in MAGA world. I mean, is this the new reality for this, mar this MAGA well, era of politicians that they, they don't back down when they're confronted with facts. Perhaps it is, but I think that's, that poses a, a test for all of us in journalism uh, as well. I, I've made it at a point, if they will not accept those facts, I don't go on to other issues. I'm, I'm not going to go to participate in some kind of a, a sham where you somehow equate uh, the legitimacy of an election or the peaceful transfer of power with a debate over tax cuts or environmental regulation. If you can't pass that fundamental threshold of saying, yes, the last election was not stolen, two, I will buy, abide by the results of the next election, then I, I, I think that's all voters and viewers need to know. I don't think if, if, if you're willing to lie about something as big as that, why should anything else they want to talk about be given any credence? I mean, it's such an important point. I mean, we've got a, vice, a presidential debate coming up right here on CNN uh, later this month. As a journalist, as an American, what do you think is the most important question that needs to be answered from both candidates? Who won the last election? Yeah. Very simple. 
Yeah. And won the last election. Let's just let's just, let's discuss and debate. And we'll see. I mean, look, we it's been asked by Donald Trump. He refuses to answer it correctly, but we'll see what he does when he's given that opportunity in front of 140 million people. You know, it's a, it's a little different on, on a stage like that. Yeah. And when it's an actual debate. Yeah. And, you know, that, but that's a, it's a real test. Love this video. Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.